Thank you, Priscilla, and welcome to everyone for the first panel of this event. So a session hosted by Imagine Communication about the five steps to transform TV ad sales from spot first to audience first across all platforms and screens. And to discuss this topic, I have the pleasure to be joined today by Rob Malcolm, Chief Product Officer at Imagine. So welcome, Rob. Good morning, everybody. Great to be here. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and give us a brief overview of Imagine's activities. And I think you also want to share with some slides with the audience. So please. Yeah, do. thanks very much. Uh, so let me just um, present my screen here. Give me a second. Share screen. All right, hopefully you can all see my screen. So thanks. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here today to talk about what I think is probably the most important topic um, in broadcast advertising today. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to remind people uh, on the call as to who Imagine is. You may, um, you may or may not know us. Uh, we're previously known as Harris Broadcast. You can see some very impressive stats on the slide. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Um, but I think the, the, the point um, here is that we currently carry about $50 billion worth of ad um, sales and inventory every year through our systems across the world. Um, we're one of these uh, vendors that, um, you know, is behind the scenes uh, and that, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't always... Um, uh, you know, feature in, in any discussions, but we're we're very busy behind the scenes making a lot of things happen, um, particularly in in terms of monetization of content. So um, I'll start off with um, this slide because this um, graph to me is probably a graph that's worth a thousand words. Um, uh, you can see um, that this graph is is fundamentally about global video ad sales. And the blue part of the graph, the lower piece, is how some forecasts um, look for linear television advertising. Uh, the orange is uh, what we believe is going to happen with digital. Um, this obviously excludes social media video advertising, but it includes all kind of VOD uh, advertising. Uh, anything that, that fundamentally is non-social is in the orange bar here. And so... The first thing that I'll point out is that there is a huge opportunity for broadcasters to grow if they can fully realize the potential of combining linear and, um, and digital. Um, you can see the net growth over here. And, and the reason why it grows is fundamentally that digital advertising and addressable advertising um, on a per CPM basis is worth more than linear. And although right now, um, you know, there, there's obviously a lot of debate as to, you know, how do you normalize between linear and digital? And, you know, can you truly command the, the rates that you get on linear on digital? But, you know, our belief is, is that eventually, um, you know, the linear and, and digital combination and the, the quality of the content and the quality of the audience will allow you to command a premium, you know, price for advertising just as television always has. Um, so the, the, the point of the graph is, is to explain that um, even in 10 years time, the, 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 the split between digital and, and linear is still going to be um, quite um, uh, equal, uh, uh, to, to, to say it one way. Um, you know, 56% would be digital and 44% would be linear. There's some, um, you know, analysts who think it's it's reversed with, you know, 40% big digital and 60% big linear. But, you know, just for argument's sake, um, it, it's, it's, it's one of those two scenarios, which means that, um, that fundamentally disbanding linear and, and forgetting about it uh, is not really an option because you're going to have linear revenue, material linear revenue for at least the next uh, decade and most likely more, and we'll talk about that on the next slide, um, because uh, in our model, linear television um, advertising actually flattens out at this, at this stage. Um, and the reason for that is there is some uh, content like live sports and news that is inherently linear. And even though it won't be necessarily watched on a, a traditional linear channel, it will still be a linear stream. And so as a consequence, the advertising associated with it would be linear. So um, the, the other point that, that I wanted to make is that if, 
<coughs> sorry, if you can actually um, sell all of this on one platform, um, the efficiencies of scale and and obviously the 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 the, the amount of automation. The, the fact that you can do reach and frequency calculations across the, the entire inventory set is inc inc incredibly important. Um, and so today, if you look at 2021, our experience is that a lot of our customers have spent um, time and effort automating the linear piece to the point where you know they they can make um, you know 10 million dollars for about $100,000 worth of, of OPEX. Um, but the digital side of the business has been put together very quickly and it doesn't scale very well and is heavily manual. So, um, <clears throat> so, so this slide is just a, a quick reminder as to you know, the, the notion of linear versus VOD because you know, a, a common question that I get asked a lot is, well, surely linear is, is dying and will eventually disappear completely. Well, the reality is, is that if you think about radio and you think about other lean back type um, modes of, of, of entertainment, um, people still want to be able to turn on a channel and watch whatever is showing. I think that's inherent, uh, inherently human and um, we don't see that going away. And like I said beforehand, um, there's some pieces of content that is inherently linear like live sports and news. So, so when you when you combine those two things together, in our view, you have to come up with a solution uh, that allows you to sell both linear and digital together uh, on an audience basis. And so, what we've done at Imagine is we come up with this six or this five step plan, um, which uh, is is a little bit of a uh, a map to allow broadcasters to figure out how to get to a true cross platform um, company. And so the, the first thing that, <clears throat> that I'll say is that this is a transformation journey. Um, in other words, no, <clears throat> no one step is, uh, needs to be done isolated from another step. In other words, you can start doing step three um, together with step one. You can start doing step four together with step two. Um, all of these things can run concurrently. They don't have to run sequential, sequentially. Uh, the reason why that's important is because um, we recognize that there's no way that any broadcaster can completely go from one step to another without doing some of the things that they used to do in the past the way that they're currently doing it. Uh, so just bear that, bear that in mind. So the first step in our mind is to change the way you sell linear inventory um, away from constraining um, how you sell to, to being spot specific or constraining how agencies and brands buy um, so that it's you know based on pure program and day part campaigns. And instead of doing that, just start selling by audience um, and, um, and decouple the, this constraint of a program and a spot um, and an audience. Um, and, and by doing that, you, you can create a much more fluid way of selling where the audience can be found rather than you're trying to basically make a one-time prediction in the future of where that audience is. The second step um, is once you start to sell on audience, your systems to some degree will be able to go find that audience um, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the time of booking the campaign. But what you really need to, to be doing is every single day and you know even in theory in real time you should be using all of the signals that you're getting from various different platforms to predict where your audience is going to be and then move that spot and find the audience uh, and that, that's important because um uh obviously as um you know various platforms and content uh, fragments Predicting uh, audiences is going to be fundamental, and you know, to some degree, um, will move away from you know um, ratings-based, pure ratings-based or, or audience prediction. So, the third step is that if you are not currently selling the advertising that is being used for your VOD and OTT inventory, in other words, you're using some kind of demand side platform, um, then. Um, <laughs> You, you need to, to basically start selling, selling those things um, together with your linear. 
um, so that uh, a brand and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an agency can potentially buy a campaign with both uh, audience for VOD and audience for linear together uh, as a one audience buy. Um, and, you know, um, at first it, it may not be possible to use a single currency. You may have to just use the actual amount of money and use that as a split to say, like, I've got a million dollars to spend. 50% will be spent on linear, 50% will be spent on VOD and OTT. Um, step four is now that you've sold your VOD and OTT inventory, you can now displace or remove the DSP that might be doing ad insertion uh, on your VOD and OTT inventory. And the reason why that's important is because to create a truly compelling television experience, we believe that the VOD and the OTT inventory has to be broadcast quality. In other words, it has to obey broadcast rules uh, just in the same way as linear television does. So um, by selling your own inventory and displacing a DSP that might be making random decisions about your audience and making that decision on your own platform, uh, in our view, creates this beautiful television-like experience. Um, and um, step five, is where you start to say, okay, well, my audience is fragmenting across linear and OTT. Let's say your younger audiences are, are gravitating towards your OTT platform and your older audiences are gravitating towards your linear. Um, now what you want to do is for a single campaign, you want to go and optimize across those different platforms and find the audience wherever it might be. Um, and so these five steps um, may se seem complex, um, but we have customers today, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We have customers today that are already at step four of this journey. Step five, I think, will be something that um, some customers will reach in the next couple of years. So this is definitely, you know, being done today. It's it's a, a reality, um, and it's not as as hard as you think. Um, so the, the the last step that I'll just basically say here is is that. In our view, what will happen is, is that broadcasters who make it through this journey and have a true cross-platform solution will be perfectly placed to potentially consolidate other broadcasters' inventory onto one platform. And, um, and that's just because uh, the broadcasters who, who enable this way of selling and this way of monetizing uh, video content will have a competitive advantage and uh, we'll be able to command a premium rate for, for the inventory that they have. And so um, it's likely in my view that there'll be some consolidation of sales houses and broadcasters getting together to sell their inventory as a pool. Um, the last point that, that I'll make, and then um, we'll hand back over to, to Gillam, is um, transformation. Uh, and this truly is a transformation journey is it can only succeed if you change how you do things. Um, what we sometimes see is um, broadcasters um, uh, somehow just find themselves wanting to replace an old platform for a new platform. And when they do that, 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 that transition, they just wanna replicate the old way of doing things uh, with a new set of technology. Um, in our view, uh, that is a mistake. What you really need to be doing is you need to be transforming how you sell your inventory, how you think about your inventory instead of you know thinking about it as as spots and breaks and and all of those kind of linear things. Start to think about it as an audience that you're trying to monetize, and if you think about it, your business in that way, um, you will massively increase your chances of of having a successful transformation. And of course, the technology is there to support and automate all of these changes. Um, but the, the transformation and how you do things comes first and the technology supports you after that. So thank you. Hopefully that wasn't too fast and um, you got the gist of it. Thank you, Rob, for sharing these insights. Um, but before getting back to a few points you mm -hmm. just mentioned, um, I want to welcome the listeners who just joined us and to remind them they can ask the question using the chat box. 
And I'll make sure to keep a few minutes at the end of this session to give the opportunity to Rob to address these questions. Now, Rob, um, you've underlined the opportunities and the reasons uh, why broadcasters and media companies should start acting now. Um, but if I were a broadcaster willing to start the, to start this five-step journey now, um, what challenges can I expect on the road? Um, could you could you share with us a few feedback from your, the experience with your clients? about which broadcasters have, start, have started this journey already and what are the typical challenges they are, are encountering? Yeah, sure. So um, there's some customers I can obviously talk about publicly and there's some customers I can't, um, but two customers you know, that, that are in the public domain um, who are on this journey um, and, and there is information out there if you're looking for it um, is, is Sky in the UK and Nine in Australia. They have embarked on this journey, you know, um, over a number of, of previous years, um, and in my mind, are you know, are driving, you know, um, a lot of this innovation and, and driving a lot of these ideas. Um, in terms of the challenges, um, you know, faced um, on this journey, uh, I think the biggest one is the one that I just mentioned on my last slide, which is uh, confusing technology with business transformation, and really realizing that um, this is a cultural change. Um, what we find is a lot of our customers, um, uh, you know, underestimate the amount of, um, of change that is required, for example, in their sales teams. Um, you know, sales, sales teams who have been selling spots, you know, for decades, uh, sometimes even more, um, you know, struggle to, to have this paradigm shift of, of, of selling an audience instead of a spot. And those types of changes uh, to the culture and to the way in which, you know, key leaders and key organizations inside of a broadcaster think is pretty fundamental. In my mind, that trumps the biggest challenge, um, uh, you know, um, in, these, in these transformation journeys. Um, but the second challenge um, which is, 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 is material, is um, the fear that um, the agencies uh, and the brands will not want to buy in this way. Um, it's, it's very similar to the other culture of change that I just mentioned, but here it's the culture of the customer and the, the agency who's been buying spots for a long time may not want to, um, you know, buy in this new way. Um, but, you know, early indications suggest that they also realize they have to transform. And, um, and so come, overcoming those two challenges, I think, uh, would, um, would, you know, go a long way to, to a successful journey. Okay. Thanks. And uh, if I'm still putting myself in the broadcaster's position here, and you've started to tackle this question, but since, as you showed in your second slide, I think um, that linear TV advertising is uh, declining and this trend is likely to continue, um, why would I need to start going through this five-step journey uh, instead of going directly to, to digital? Yeah, so I think it is tempting to, to do that um, uh, if you think that linear is going to zero. Um, but based on, on our predictions and based on many analysts' predictions, uh, linear will decline, but it's not going anywhere in the next decade um, and will flatten out, um, you know, in the second decade. Um, and that's simply because even though viewers might be on new platforms and might be watching, you know, um, content um, over the, you know, over the top, they will still require they, they'll still want to watch linear and and many of the the formats like sports and news will, will continue to be in a linear format so in in that sense linear is not going away and will still have a material amount of, of revenue and um to, to me that's a competitive advantage uh, that broadcasters have uh, the they have uh, linear audiences which are very very valuable audiences uh, whereas the you know the digital internet companies, for example, don't have those. So so to me, it's a competitive advantage, and having both of them combined in my in my mind is the winning formula. Okay, makes sense. And maybe another question about this difference between a linear and a digital. 
um, about the, this time about the quality of the watching experience because um, usually the watching experience on digital is of a lower quality as a non-linear and you could easily tell sometimes if an ad comes from a digital or if it comes from linear so do you expect that uh, in your journey that a digital ad on linear will be the same quality as a digital ad on the internet or can we make can we make it better? Is there a better way? Great question. Great question. <laughs> and and I think we've all suffered from, you know, seeing the same ad over and over again or mm. the same set of ads, uh, you know, um, in every break uh, while watching over the top or digital. Um, the reality is, is that um, the way in which many, um, you know, ad serving companies or SSPs have, have approached Digital is in the same way as 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 the digital internet is run, um, and to to me, um, it doesn't it doesn't do well in creating a great viewing experience. In our view, and imagine, you know, we believe there is a, a better way, uh, and and that is to take the broadcast rules that you have on linear uh, to make the ad decisions um, uh, on a single platform in order to, um, to have a linear-like viewing experience, regardless of what platform um, it's on. And uh, the, the reality is, is that if you, if you go on this cross-platform journey, you will have all the information you need uh, and the technologies that you need to, to, to make that ad decision um, for both linear and digital, uh, so that the viewer cannot tell the difference and you still command a great viewing experience. Uh, so I think we already have only 10 minutes left. So please, the audience, um, don't hesitate to send us your question using your chat box. Um, now, Rob, um, maybe a, a bit different question. Um, what are the benefits um, I wanted to know about server-side ad insertions uh, versus client-side ad insertions? Can you Could you elaborate a bit about mm -hmm. that? Yeah, um, I mean, there's obviously pros and cons to, to both uh, approaches. Um, uh, many, uh, you know, many people will, will say that client-side ad insertion, you know, suffers from ad blocking and, and those types of things. F for me, the biggest advantage of server-side ad insertion is the, 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 the reduction on your dependency on very complex SDKs in the video player. Um, if, if the video player is very sophisticated, then the problem that you, that you find is that you are now dependent on all of the viewers upgrading their video player in order to uh, match you know, whatever your video ad server needs it to, 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 to basically send it. So um, to me, decoupling the video player and the ad decisioning um, is, is, is pretty fundamental so that you can innovate on the, on the ad decisioning without having to upgrade the video player all of the time. Um, there will obviously be some dependencies, but but to me, that's the biggest advantage of server-side ad insertion. Okay, interesting. And now um, coming back to your uh, presentation and the five-step journey. Um, so you showed that, and you said that nobody has reached step five, right? Um, but not that, I'm aware, a... not that I'm aware of, but they, they may, <laughs> yeah. there may be, there may be some others out there that have, have reached step five already. So, yeah, or some others that might make it to step five uh, quite soon in the coming years. Um, so, what can we expect on the market when one or several one of them are reached step five? Uh, can we expect some consolidation? You've started to to address this one, but uh, I wanted to, to know more. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, you know, it's just, um, you know, with my kind of business head on, uh, it makes sense to me that broadcasters no longer see each other as competitors. <clears throat> and so they fundamentally have one goal in mind, which is to maximize the return on their content investments. And so the more money they can make from monetizing their content, uh, the happier they'll become. And so I, I do think that some broadcasters will emerge as leaders in maximizing uh, the monetization of content. And I think it's natural that those companies will consolidate, um, you know, a lot of the inventory in the industry to make it easier for agencies and brands to buy from one place in one consistent fashion. Um, but, you know, uh, th that could take a couple of years. It could take a decade. It could take more. So um, it, it's just something that I do think is coming. 
Okay. So if the broadcasters uh, who are watching us right now, after the session are um, convinced that they need to start this journey, even though some uh, broadcasters are going to make it to step five, they should, right? Still should, even though some, some will become large enough to... Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Because okay. there's no, I mean, there's 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 no guarantee that'll happen. Number one and number two, is you know, um, in my in my mind, this transformation journey is is critical for the survival of our entire industry. Um, uh, at, you know, as audience start to fragment, uh, I mean, well on underway already, but. Um, yeah, completely. And I also wanted to touch on the question of targeted advertising, because as you know, uh, in some European markets, um, you cannot target people individually. So how, how do you deal with uh, legislation and challenges uh, like that? Yeah, I mean, compliance is, is, is pretty key. And uh, the broadcasters will know all about compliance, uh, because linear markets traditionally have been heavily regulated, unlike, you know, um, some of the digital, you know, players that have emerged. I do think that regulation uh, overall will increase for both linear and digital. Well, It'll, it'll, there'll be a leveling off of, 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 of regulations. I think the digital people will start to be regulated similar to uh, the traditional broadcasters. Um, but as it relates to you know, privacy and targeting, um, I mean, the reality is, is that linear has existed you know, for decades without individual targeting. Uh, you know, they've used um, broad you know, panels and you know, they've associated content with audiences which you know, will continue to happen and, and is one of the powers of, of television is that you, you have a heavy correlation between program and, and audience. Um, so I think that that'll continue. Um, but I think eventually, um, you know, the world will move towards you know, cohorts, which is essentially something that Google has announced where um, you'll have audiences, much more defined audiences that are not in individually uh, identifiable, that you can still target as a group um, and, and still command a premium price for the advertising. Okay, interesting. Um, it seems we don't have any question from the audience yet, so feel free, you still have a couple of minutes and uh, you probably left everyone speechless, Rob, so <laughs> good job. And I'm gonna give you like two last minutes to make um, a closing statement mm -hmm. for, for this session. If you don't want to focus on a few points we haven't mentioned yet. Um, like, like I said right at the beginning, um, this is a journey. Um, it's a transformation journey. Um, it, it doesn't um, have to be a fast journey. It can, it can take a number of years. Um, and you don't have to disband, you know, everything that works for you today to, to, to go on this journey. You can start small um, and experiment and uh, over time. Uh, you can, um, uh, you know, find yourself as becoming a digital media company because fundamentally that's what um, all broadcasters need to, to transform into is, is digital media companies. And, uh, you know, we believe with our global experience, having seen, um, you know, many, many broadcasters in every continent of, of the world uh, go through this transformation journey, we, we believe that we have uh, a good formula um, and so if, um, you know, if you're interested in, in finding out more, uh, we would be more than happy to, to help. Okay, great. And uh, I'm sure people will, uh, will touch on you. Uh, so thank you, Rob, for all these insights. Thank the audience for watching us. And for the next session, we'll be back in 20 minutes at 11 a.m. CT for a presentation with Deutsche Welle. So make sure to tune in. Thank you again, Rob. And thank you, everyone. And have a nice day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.